Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to King Arthur the Roleplaying War Game. I think I got that right. Oh, sorry. I start off all nice and then I punch the mic. I'm like, hey everybody, let me punch you in the ear like an asshole. Um, so last time we broke into here into the uh, Field of Just Lust, into Dorset. Because if we look at the map, which is available now, uh, Dorset here was fighting Salisbury and we're coming to the aid of Salisbury. At the same time, there's a mission up here. Um, quests. The Lady of the Lake. Adventure Battle. I'm not really familiar with it. You can find all your actual quests in one place. Left click and entry uh, to get to the request. That's what we did. Um, I guess adventure is the most important thing there. So we're going to send... Wait, let's look at these other things first. A morality chart. So we moved a little bit more towards... Christian and rightful, apparently, towards sanctuary. Um, we'll worry about those if we get any of those. What's the other one? Objectives. So we have our alliance with Somerset. Oh, Excalibur opened up. I don't know what these two paths are. The sword in the stone changed the world. It was the instrument of change, but lost all its powers after the miracle and became nothing more than a cracked piece of steel. These past nights, you have been dreaming of the sword, restored to its former glory. If only you throw it into a strange lake. That seems like a good idea. Ah, throw it into a strange lake. In your, in your dream, see, it didn't say your, in your dream, you hear a female voice calling out of the deep waters, promising to answer your questions. You asked many wise men, monks in the monasteries and druids in the woods. Yo, dudes in the woods, do you know? And they all told you that your dreams are of the mysterious Lady of the Lake. I like how it's like King Arthur has lots of people. He's just walking everybody. Hey, you! Do you know what your dream is? They're like, yeah, shut the fuck up. The key to the lake lies with a wounded knight called Sir Gareth in the fabled Glanston Ab Abbey of Dumnonia. Dum 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 I can't pronounce it. We've already, um... So we've already talked to Sir Gareth. He told us you can collect taxes from your provinces if we do this. Oh, cool. Yes, my liege. So, Sir Mark, you're going to go there. But first of all, we're going to send Sir yes, Kay to crush the evil King Idres. Oh, my God. He's got a big army. Is it bigger than ours? Smick smack, snicker snack. Uh-oh. I don't know if that's good. That looks bigger than our army. And he's got two fucking dudes. L l let me pontificate upon this a moment. I think this is a battle we would be best to avoid. So, okay, nobody got any experience points. So we retreated here. Ready Can we get... Oops, I want... Sir Gareth? Yes, yeah, Sir Gareth, can we disband you into your own army? There you go. That's awesome, dude. Are you yes, Sir Gareth? No, that's King... Uh, yeah, there you go. Can you get here? Yeah, I'm join up way. with these guys. They're gonna need you, Knights of the Round Table. So, yeah. Sir Gareth, you join up here. Good, we need his men. We can see Sir Gareth where... Okay, Mark apparently is sitting on that side of the table now. He's like, I'm not gonna sit by this guy. Sir Gareth is a sage... Wise nobles, seekers of ancient knowledge, their battle skills are limited, but their wisdom allows them to exploit tactical advantage. <clears throat> but he's got a bunch of fucking spells. Dragon's Breath, Curse of Shadows, Shadows come to life, freezing the soul of everyone. That's pretty cool. I don't have that in real life. <laughs> Alright, can Lord. you... Are the odds any better? Oh, the odds are a little better, but they're still not good. Man, their troops are just better than ours. Yeah, our bowmen suck. Oh, our bowmen's... Our tr yeah, they're just... We're going to retreat again. <laughs> we're like, are you better? Oh, still stronger. Yeah, we'll go hide over here. And then Sir Mark. Yes, my lord. Of Markington. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. You go find the Lady of the Lake. On my way. You go into Salisbury. Hello, is that Stonehenge? 
This is the village of Wick upon Winter, where Sir Gareth received his incurable wound while searching for the Lady of the Lake. I thought they cured it. In fact, he's with my group. They cured his incurable wound. First, you have to find the druid who will tell you how to talk to the lady. I don't know how to talk to the lady. I use my tongue. <laughs> All right, let's begin this shit. Let's see, his adventuring is only a three. I think that's what they said was important. Oh, there's the difficulty. Ah, oh, fuck it. We're gonna go for it. Wick upon Winter is a small and desolate settlement near the woods. Only a few village elders are sitting by the town hall, staring blankly with their dumb expressions at the ashen clouds. The wind smell of stale water and smoke. I guess since we're here, we can go to the place where Sir Gareth, Gareth fought. Or have Sir Mark Tark talk to the Tark. Tark to the elders. Do that, King Mark. Sir Mark. When you convince the elders that you're indeed a Knight of the Round Table, of course it is, it's Sir Mark. They soon open up and warn you about a strange sh soldiers who recently destroyed an entire army. They are monsters, they say, savages from the northern provinces who seek the Lady of the Lake. Sir Mark has no time for this tomfuckery. Tell me about the Northern Army, Elders! The Elders admit that they never really saw these Northerners close at hand, but an old boatman who lives near the lake had to ferry their leaders to the farthest show shore many times. You should ask him. These guys are great. They're like, yes, this mighty army destroyed this other army. And you're like, what do they look like? They're like, I don't know. Mr. Mark's like, then I will go to this boat, man. See you later, elders. You know what kind of wine they like? Elderberry wine. The boatman lives on a hill above the shore from where you can see the lake clearly in huge blocks of land, of stone with faded carvings protruding from the soil. The boatman proves to be a greedy old man who asks for 200 gold before he'll tell you anything. Well, Sir Mark the Good is a good Christian, and he could smite the guy, but he's going to be like, Take this gold and tell me everything you know, Boatman. I need a better voice for Mark. I don't have any good upstanding voices I do. All the voices I do are really wussy. You pay the old man, and he tells you what he saw. He seems terrified by those northerners. They're savages, he says. They serve a dark force that sent them on this long journey. Are they like Scots? Because, like, I got no problem with the Scots. They invented one of my favorite things, I think. Scotch. Uh, they keep huge beasts that prowl and attack at night. You stand a better chance in the daytime. Sir Mark, oh, I heard about the druids in the woods. Do you know him? Oh, about a druid. I don't know plurals. Yes, he is a gentle, peaceful soul. He lives in the woods at spring. We are finished here. Let's return to the village. Are you, Sir Mark? Uh, Sir Mark, are you talking to the uh, the boatman? Or what the fuck did I do? Okay, hopefully you didn't see anything. I accidentally tabbed out, <laughs> and I'm back. Wick upon winter is a. S oh, we already read that. Well, we've already talked to the elders. Um, we can go to the place where Sir Gareth fought, or we can go talk to the druid. Um, didn't the old man, oh man, what did the boatman say? I already forgot. He was all like, I'm the boatman, man! And I'm like, this is why I get trouble in games. Especially games that tell you what you're supposed to do, because I just don't pay attention. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. If I was on the Death Star missions, I would be like in the wrong sector. <laughs> it's like, what? I thought we were supposed to go to Naboo. I... Um, King Mark's gonna go find the druid. The druid is an old man in the traditional outfit of the followers of the old faith. His hut stands near a shrine. You notice him eyeing your soldiers suspiciously. When you tell him that you know about Sir Gareth and his quest, he greets you warmly. It's Christopher Lee. Now remember, the druid is the old faith, and King Mark, uh, I'm playing him, I don't know, is it, oh he is, see look, he's a seven of Christian, he's a Christian. So they're on the opposite ends. Sir Mark, tell me how I can speak to the lady of the lake. The Lady of the Lake is an ancient presence. She has always been here, sleeping the sleep of the waters, awaking in times of need. You can speak to her on the hidden island that you can only reach at dawn. However, if you have the Horn of Avalon, you can cross there at any time. Where, pray tell, can I find this horny elf, Horn of Avalon? I am the Keeper of the Horn. 
I could give it to you, but on one condition. If your king promised me that he will let me live here unharmed and that no one will enter my territory, these woods and the lake should be a forbidden place to anyone else. Now, if I would have sent a different knight, I would have him respect the old faith. If I would have known this is what was happening, I would have. But I, if I'm going to be an honest role player, as Mark is the good Christian, he's not going to be—he's not going to do the old faith thing. I am a good Christian, so I can't promise you that. I will wait until dawn and leave. The druid simply nods, then he tells you that you should be careful because the northerners plan to seek out the Lady of the Lake as well. They have their own inscrutable purposes. And you will need some luck if you want to deal with them. Uh, let's go to the fucking lake. You stand on the southern shore of the lake. Everything is quiet. The wind smells of fresh water, and you see nothing that would betray the presence of anything magical. But deep in your soul, you feel that this is one of the most important places in Britannia. We're going to wait until dawn. Sorry we don't have that fucking horn. When the shimmer of dawn paints a bridge of light on the surface of the lake, it leads to an island you hadn't noticed before. A bridge that you could walk on. But when you reach the island in all, you're surrounded by the northerners. A dru the druid must have told them about you. That fucking pagan. Guess we're going to have to attack the northerners. And we let him live. I could have just stabbed him. Attack. I don't have... Oh, fuck. I didn't expect King Mark was going to be fighting anybody. They got wargs, winter breed, whatever the fuck that is. Looking down there below, it looks like a venom a little bit. They've got giants, and they've got autumn breed. We've got a company of bowmen, a company of footmen, and whatever these fucking sentinels are. That's fucking great. <laughs> I hope if we lose this quest that it doesn't end the game. I like how it's kind of like raining or some shit. Alright, can we all hide in this house? Just pretend we're an army of farmers. We're a farm army. Oh, I like the... Oh, is that, that must be the leg. Lady, can you help us? Alright. Oh, this is weird. There's no victory locations, apparently. I guess this is different than the other battles. Oh shit. There's no fucking cover, man. We've got Wait, okay, that won't be I don't I don't know if sentinel what sentinels are good at. Infantry. So we're gonna set these up as the first whatever. No, I want him to. Okay, I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> okay, you guys go like that. Put the archers behind you. And then start. I don't know what were King Mark's special things. He's got Dragon Strike. The hero inflicts huge damage on the closest six opponents within a 20 meter range. The Guardian Angel. The first 15 attacks aimed at the hero's unit will fail immediately. Probably do Dragon Strike. Where the hell are the Northerners? Hello? Um, hello? Lady of Lake sent us. Hello? <laughs> I think I need to, like, just appear out of nowhere and gangbang the fuck out of us. That doesn't sound fun. This is the most exciting <laughs> battle ever. I apologize. So we're gonna go find them? I would really rather they came to us, seeing as they fucking outnumber us by a big amount. Oh wait, that's them. Let's see, there's some fucking wargs. Wargs. Alright, bowmen. Do your shit, bros. Come on, shoot those wargs do it for bilbo baggins of the shire here they come come on do it for bilbo baggins please come on guys okay let's see our uh, leader who where's king mark 
Uh, still not used to these controls. They're a little unwieldy. There he is. Oh man, he's like huge compared to the rest of the guys. I like his outfit though. Probably should be paying attention to what's going on. Yeah, there you go. Let... Let that... Oh, fuck. It's the dogs of war. Fight those wargs. I think we are. Oh, yep. There they are. Six. Seven. I don't know what kind of injuries we're taking. Can I click on that unit? Okay, there's the bowmen. Oh, no. I didn't want that. I wanted... Okay, our stamina is good and our hit points are good on both of these. I want the, I want the footmen. There we go. They're a little more beat up. Now, I want these guys. Holy shit! Well, I think we've seen giants. Um, we're gonna have to use St. Mark's. Well, not St. Mark's. Come on, kill these fucking wargs. Let's get these damn wargs killed. There's two of them, guys. Hurry up and kill them. Giants are coming. Okay, come on. One more. Get them killed. Hurry up. Please, tits. Where the fuck are they going? We're getting flanked? That's not good. No, no, no. You guys. Reform. Yeah, there we go. Let the bowmen do some damage to these giants. We're gonna get Mark to do his special things as uh, Guardian Angel, and this is not good. <laughs> How do you like to be one of the dudes here? Gotta fight these guys. I wouldn't like it. Use Dragon Strike. There we go. That did some damage. Um, yeah, attack these guys. Come on, please, please, please. Mark, can you use Guardian Angel? Yeah, hopefully that'll defend them from some giant attacks. Oh man, look at our dead guys, that's sad. Hey, we dropped a giant! Fuck yeah, we dropped another giant! It's good to be a knight, I guess. Oh man, that giant sound number guy is flying! Yeah! Hell yeah! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! No, reform, reform! Oh god. I don't know how good these winter breed dudes are. Or autumn breed. Alright, everybody gangbang the hell out of these guys before the rest show up. This is not good. Come on, kill, kill, kill. And there's still a lot of the other guys. I'm just lucky they attacked piecemeal. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull this off. So many of these dickweeds showing up. Come on, can we kill this guy? There's two of them. Come on, kill them, kill them, kill them. There's one of them, kill them. Kill them, hurry up, hurry up. Murder, murder, murder. There we go. No, no, you guys, over here. I know we're gonna get gang banged or something, but... You guys stay ranged. Let them chase you. Shoot and run, shoot and run. King Mark, do you have anything left? Use your dragon thing. Boom. So hopefully that hurts some of the enemy, these winter breed guys. What do they got? 20? 14. We kind of have a slight numbers advantage there. I don't think we have a superior... There are archers running for their dear lives against these auto breed guys. That's actually good for us. Okay, use your guardian angel there, Sir Mark. Call on the divine power of your angel to def defend you. So we can kill these dirty, dirty northerners. Of course, in the country where I'm from, northerners are awesome. <coughs> like people from Michigan. Not saying I'm from Michigan, but I could be. Oh man, there's still eight of their winter breed. That's not good. Twenty of those. Fuck. Our guys are a little beat up. Come on, guys. Our guys turn the t tide. Kill these stupid winter breed dudes. You got the average hit points way down. 
Now, where are Bowman? Bowman? Oh, there they go. <laughs> yeah! Alright, okay, is Guardian Angel almost gone? I think he's out of mana points. Oh, only two more of those Winter Breed guys, then we can all turn and fight these guys. Now, we are definitely losing people, though. We've lost a bunch of footmen. I think we've lost a few sentinels. Come on, kill that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody turn around and beat these butt. Where, where are you guys going? No. Yeah. Sir Mark. The Markalicious. Get these guys. I'm sure our bowmen can handle themselves. I don't know where the guys they were fighting went. Oh! Aha, the guys that were fighting came back to fight our guys. Good, we'll have the bowman come up. Oh, we're gonna win this! You can see that their morale's coming down because we killed so many of them. Oh, yes! Sir Mark, you pulled off the upset of the year against wargs and giants and some dudes. Hey, we actually killed more people than we lost, too. Kick ass! Sir Mark, you're the markiest Mark ever. Oh, hello. I'd like to show her my Excalibur. <laughs> She's like, ooh, it cuts. Yep, I'll put my sword in your stone. I don't know what that means. It just means, yeah. <laughs> because if, if that's based on a real character model, I want to meet her. Apparently this part of her hair is incredibly red. That's the devil in me. The Excalibur is a mighty sword, ancient and powerful. It was created by the Lady of the Lake ages ago. When King Arthur pulled the Excalibur out of the magic stone, the world changed and the sword lost all of its powers. But now it is restored to its former glory and ready to change the world again. Why would a lady who lives in a lake want to make a sword? I don't know. Uh, so let's see. We murdered all those guys. Everybody got experience in our group. You can find many unique locations on the campaign map. These locations grant special effects. You can read the detailed description in the information panel to gain the advantage. The knight must stand on the location at the end of the season. Oh, I want to find out about that. So like stone... Oops. Take my advice... My good king, you need a stronghold. It will serve as your seat of power. Strongholds are not ordinary towns or castles. They are built on the few truly sacred places of the realm. And now you have to choose one of these possible spots. London or Viraconium. Both of them have almost lost their former power though. You will need to use the magical sword Excalibur to perform a rite which will make your stronghold live again. You have the legendary weapon of the ancients, the fabled Excalibur, and with the magic sword in hand, how could anyone question your right to rule the land? I do rule, thank you. The people in your provinces bow their heads to their once and future king. You can begin to collect taxes, recruit armies, and prepare for challenges, since the high kings of Britannia will not be as obedient as you faithful servants. Your faithful servants. So I would guess um, defending knights double their mana points. So if you stand here at the end of the season, you gonna do that? That's my king. Can we get you in there? No, I don't want to fight King Bertram. That's not my goal. Not in the least. All right, so they said that we can build... Um, we're going to have to find a place for our capital. Either London, which would be here, or Vera... I don't know where that is. At least somewhere around here. We'll probably go for London anyway, even though it's halfway across. It's just because that's what I know. <laughs> so what's this? The Chronicle? Okay, it's just talking about strongholds. That's not really that interesting. Each stronghold has a secret heart, a powerful item of magic. The city knew... 
this secret, and they created these cities around their most valuable artifacts, such as the Spear of Lug. Lua. It was the time when only heroes and gods knew the whereabouts of the sacred grounds, where the streams of mystical power converged, and they created their castles there. The knowledge was lost, and the strongholds were left in ruins, yet many people still remember them, but only as figments of imagination from children's story. The bleak castles or giant halls of kings, the towers of the dragons, those were all strongholds once where heroes went to feast or die. So we've got to pick one of those places and bring our magic sword there. So I'll end this episode like I have with the others, with just reading some of the story that they have in the back story. We have almost all of it caught up. The Age of Legends. The Age of Legends was the time of heroes who fought monsters and defeated mad wizards. And angry wizards too. Or the time of demigods walking the land and consorting with the mystic race of the Sidhi, the lords and ladies of the crystal towers that the common people now call fairies. But the heroes died, the gods disappeared, and the fairies withdrew to their own twilight kingdoms or deep underground. Thus began the time of mankind. The first king of Britannia was called Vortigern, who inherited a realm filled with the magical treasures of the legendary past and enlisted the services of the greatest wizard of all times, the mighty Merlin. But Vortigern died, the treasures were buried, Merlin disappeared, and the realm fell into ruin. This was the time when one of the greatest saints of Christianity, Joseph of Arimathea, sailed to Britannia and brought with him the Holy Grail, the cup that Jesus used during the Last Supper. The Grail, a holy relic possessing miraculous powers, was hidden somewhere in Britannia, but no one knows where, though it could grant tremendous power to one who finds it. And we'll finish with the end, the story so far. <clears throat> After this, you, we won't probably have any more episodes to end in reading, but it's kind of cool if you don't know any of the Arthurian re legend. It all began in the darkest years of Britannia, when Uther Pendragon, the king of the realm, fell sick, and not even his most trusted advisor, wise Merlin the wizard, could ease his suffering. Meanwhile, his enemies plotted against him and killed many of his warriors. In those days, no one was aware that he had a son, who had been conceived in secret and who had been given to Merlin to be brought up as he saw fit. Because that's normal. It's normal to hand your kids off to strange wizards. Then Uther Pendragon died and the realm suffered from a from great perils for a long time. Every lord in his castle yearned to be king, and every petty king ruling his land wanted to rule the whole of Britannia. Then Merlin went to London and summoned all the rulers of the petty kingdoms that all the powers of the land should come to the castle there, where he would in his great mercy perform a wondrous miracle for to show who should be the rightful king of the realm. When all the powerful had gathered, eager to know and curious to see, there was seen in the cathedral against the high altar a great marble stone and therein stuck fast a fair sword and the letters were written in gold on the sword that said who pulleth the sword of the stone is the rightful king born of all England probably wasn't the awkward pause in the inscription then all the kings set against the sword but only young Arthur foster child of Sir Ector could pull the magic weapon out of the stone unknown to him he was the true son and the rightful heir of Uther Pendragon, the last great king of Britain. He was the one fated to be the ruler of Britain, who was fostered on Merlin's orders, but who did not know his true lineage, which was still a mystery to all but the wizard. So really, Merlin was just like, hey everybody, look at this guy who's going to win. Screwed you all over. And then when he pulled the sword out of the store and every stone, storn, everything changed. Like a cut that severed all the threads in the tapestry of the world, or a curse that undid Whatever magic that held the world together, young Arthur and his simple act changed Britain forever. There was no need for great apparitions. Every living soul just knew that the change of wonders was upon them. Later they called it the change or the miracle. In the wilderness, monsters woke from their sleep and the air crackled around the ancient stones. Pagan shamans pray again to the gods long thought dead. In the north, all the savage tribes gather around a new flag. In the south, strange creatures hide in abandoned forts. Somewhere in the depths of the ancient mines of Cornwall, something stirs and the believers of the old Roman ways gather strengths. And there were others. They seemed like giants wearing black steel and strange weapons. They were powerful and invincible warriors. The people called them knights. No one knew who they were, who they are. No one knew where they came from. But they might be Arthur's only hope to stand against the coming tide of wonders, mayhem, and awe. Ah, 
So begins the tale of Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. Which is kind of the opening theme that we came in on. So I guess I didn't have to read that, but it's still kind of fun to share it. So thanks everybody who sat through this much. Next time, we're going to figure out how to recruit and all that stuff. Take it easy, everybody.